Hey everybody, Steve Borey here from the American Casino Guide book. And today our video is called Sports Betting, How to Bet and How to Win. And I'm going to interview Blair Rodman. He is a uh, former professional poker player, he's an advantage casino gambler, and he also was a member of a professional sports betting team for many years, which uh, saw a lot of success. So Blair's coming out with a new book called All About Sports Betting. So he's the perfect guy to answer a bunch of questions we have. I'm not a sports better myself, but uh, Blair was able to put me in the right direction to answer all these questions. Now it's a complex subject, so we're going to break it down into two different videos. Here today in part one, I'm going to interview Blair about how to bet. So we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, history of sports betting, how uh, sports books make their money, and then we're going to talk about the various bets you can make. And then later we're going to do part two with Blair where he tells us how to be a winner at sports betting. Hi everybody, Steve Borey here from the American Casino Guide book. And today we're going to take a look at sports betting and we are at the offices of Huntington Press in Las Vegas and they're going to be coming out with a new book on sports betting and we are sitting here with the author Blair Rodman. Nice to see you Blair. Nice to meet you. Yes, yeah, so, so Blair I'm familiar with your book Kill Phil which is uh, primarily a poker book. So your background is in poker but also in sports betting and perhaps you can explain to everyone uh, how, you, how you got into this. Uh, I got here in 1980. I've always gambled since I was a little kid. And when I came here, I started playing poker. And progressed from that into, uh, with Anthony Curtis, introduced me to Stanford Wine. We started playing casino tournaments. And we did that throughout the 80s. And then the casinos basically threw out all the good players. So one of the guys that I knew from sports said, I think I have a friend who's a high level government programmer and he thinks that he can beat the NBA. You want to help? I said, yeah, I need something to do. So we did that. So I did that for 10 years. We had a, probably the second biggest betting group in the country, and we were very successful, and it was, I learned a lot. You know, I'd always bet sports, but then I learned what it was really about. And then that lasted about 2000. Then I went into poker, just as poker was becoming a big thing. Wrote Kill Phil. Did that pretty heavily throughout the 2000s. And then I kind of got burned out on poker, and I was focused more on sports. And Anthony Curtis came to me and wanted a book on basic sports betting after the Supreme Court overturned the uh, Papsa decision. I says it would, it's really needed. Can you write one? I said, sure. So I'm working on the book now. It's uh, a couple of months out. It's going to be called All About Sports Betting. And I'm excited to, to get it out there. I've got the manuscript that just needs to go into production and be, be finished. Okay, so, sounds great. And now for people who aren't familiar, PASPA, uh, we're going we're to a little give a little background on this. In, in May 2018, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three to strike down the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, which is the PASPA you were referring to, and that law barred uh, sports gambling uh, with some exceptions. It made Nevada the only state where a person could wager on the results of a single game. So it overturned that and said you, you can have it in, in other states in the U.S. So now we're doing this in June 2019 and according to the uh, ESPN website which has uh, information on sports betting, currently there are eight states with legalized sports betting. Seven more have passed bills allowing it but it's not yet in operation and there are 29 other states that have introduced a bill to legalize sports betting but they haven't passed it yet. So this is something that's going to be bigger and bigger in the United States. Now unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for you, I, I, I don't really know anything about sports betting. It's one area where I'm very weak. The only, the only uh, story I could say about sports betting was I, I once had a girlfriend who thought she was a good sports better. <laughs> And, and she, so she followed sports betting, and she, she used to like to bet baseball. So I, so I had a little interest in it, and I followed what she did. And one time, she bet eight games, and she lost every single game. So I, I, I know that's hard to do, but that's my only experience with sports betting, because I never really bet sports myself. All right, so, so one thing I wanted to ask you was this PASPA, Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992, when they overturned that, how did that affect the world of sports betting? It, it has opened up a huge opportunity, a huge can of worms. It's, it's, the response has been pretty amazing. But this, the, way, the way sports was in this country, up until 1949, there was no legalized sports. So everything was bet through bookies. 
And in 1949, Nevada legalized sports betting. So books started up here. But they were a very, very small part of the you know, sports betting handle in the country. Most of it was still illegal. It's still mostly illegal because you know, only, with only Nevada being legal, much of the betting was going to offshore illegal books. So the figures that I've seen is like Americans bet $150 billion on sports in a year. And maybe five million of that is Nevada. The rest of it is all illegal offshore betting. Mm -hmm. So what this law did, and, and what their what their goal is, is to repatriate the money that's going offshore, where there's no taxes paid, and it's basically you know it's all cash, so they don't have any way to track it. They want to repatriate that money into the United States. They think it's going to happen, uh, but it's all so new and so up in the air. And each state is making their own laws, and state legislatures, for the most part, don't know anything about gambling or sports betting. So they all think there's going to be this huge bonanza and everything, and they're all ripping and tearing, figuring out how much to tax and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is there's a pretty small margin for sports books. You know, even with laying the 110 or whatever, they're, they're not getting filthy rich, but they're, mm -hmm. they're grinding out their money on the juice. So it, it's going to take a while to play out before everything is understood. Now, the, the most progressive state is New Jersey, which was the state that originally challenged the PAPSA law. And through Chris Christie, it was his doing. And it wasn't, the, the uh, decision wasn't that sports betting was legal, it was that it became a state's rights issue. So each state makes their own regulations, they, they give their own licenses, they handle their own thing. And as of now, the states cannot be interconnected. So they're all on their own. So we're in this uh, kind of wild, wild west situation right now where nobody's sure what's going to happen. They want to get all this money back. There's a lot of factors that go into why they won't get it all, but they'll get some. And it's all in a state of flux right now. Hmm. Okay, so it could vary. So if someone goes into a New Jersey sports book, it could be different than in a Mississippi sports book. Absolutely. Books. And the lines from the same company, like William Hill is a very big English sports betting company that has mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 70 sports books in Nevada, and they're branching out to Mississippi, New Jersey, wherever they can you know, get their fingers in. But the line in Mississippi on, let's say, a Mississippi State football game mm -hmm. is probably going to be different than the line is going to be in Nevada because they know that the locals are going to bet that line. So instead of it being minus two, they might make it minus three, and people are going to bet it anyway. So mm -hmm. that's a smart bookie at work, but that's kind of how it works. All right, and, and then the basics for people, when we can explain, perhaps you can explain to them how the uh, sports book makes their money, because it's different than like going in and playing a game of blackjack. Uh, it's, it's different and... It's different to a degree. There's, you know, in blackjack there's a built-in house edge, unless you're smart enough to overcome it. Mm -hmm. Same thing in sports, there's a built-in house edge, which is called the vigorous or juice or vig, which is how the house makes money. So if it's a game where it's evenly matched, two teams and you would think they're evenly matched and you and I want to make a bet, we'll say let's make a $20 bet. And if you win, I'll give you $20. If you win, you give me $20. Well, the books don't do it that way because they have to not only cover their expenses but make money. So the traditional booking model when they started using point spreads was the better has to put up $11 for every 10 he wants to win. That is the casino profit. Or if you want to talk about a money line, let's say a game is there's not a point spread, but you think a team, the team is favored is minus $1.70. So you would have to put up $17 to win 10. Or the underdog, the other, the other team is plus $1.50. So you put up $10 to win 15. Now the difference between that and what, if it was a fair line, it would be $1.60 either way. So the difference between that is where the casino makes their money. Same thing on other offerings like parlay cards and things like that. They don't pay what the mathematical odds are. They pay less, and they mm -hmm. take the difference. That's the profit margin. All right, so, so now you've explained how the sports books make their money mm -hmm. on the bets that they offer. And now, if it, it, I've, I've been in sports books. I'm not a big sports fan, but they are some of the most exciting places when you, when you get a game there that's just all these people rooting and screaming and yelling. It, it's a very exciting place, and it's great. So there's a whole variety of bets you can make. So let, let's go over some examples of, of some of the bets you can make and, and explain how they're made, please. Okay. Okay, okay so we're going to start with uh, an NFL line. So you see here, 
this is, well, the first game is Thursday, September the 5th, 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, the game is 8, 820. Now, next to that, you see GM number. That's the game number? That is the game number, or they call it the rotation number. Mm -hmm. So all, almost, almost all sports books will use those same numbers for those same teams because it makes it uniform and it's much easier for people to know what's going on. Okay, and it's Green Bay at Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And the home team is always the bottom team or the even number. Oh, an even number. Okay. And then opener. There's a 46. What is it, 46 or 45? No, 46. I'm getting old. My glasses uh, need to adjust, right? 46 and three and a half. Yes. And that's, I don't know where that opener exactly comes from, but that was basically the earliest lines that were put up. Mm -hmm. So those lines will start moving. You can see they're not the same in, at every casino. They're not greatly different, but Caesars has minus four, South Point minus three and a half. The numbers, the numbers on the screen are the favorite numbers. So there should be a minus in front of all these numbers. The next game, Minnesota four and a half, should be minus four and a half on that team. You know, it's not always the home team. If you, if you go down to Kansas City, they're a four or five point favorite on the road against Jacksonville. But the five is up across from Jackson, uh, across from Kansas City, which shows you who the favorite is. Uh, okay, so explain, please. So if I'm going and it says now, now these are all on the on the in Las Vegas sports books. So so if you go to a Caesars and Caesars is any of the Ce doesn't have to necessarily well Caesars Palace, but mm -hmm. it could be Caesars Entertainment, which owns all the Caesars yes. properties. Yes. So if you went to the Link or you went to Harrah's. Or, or one of the other Caesars properties, it's mm -hmm. going to be the same number at all, all of the sports books. Yes. So now what does the 46 mean? 46 is the game total. Okay, so the, the, the other number is the game size. So Chicago is a four point favorite. The total is the total number of points scored in that game by both teams added together. Okay, that's the under over? Yes. What they call? All right, so now that one I know. <laughs> <laughs> now Chicago, is favored, so you say these should be minus. This should be minus four. If there's a number up there, it 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 donate it, it denotates the favorite. So when the, when there's a number there, it should be minus four. It means uh, they're a four point favorite. All right. So so according to this, you're you're either going to bet the under over, or you're going to uh, 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 give or take the points. If yeah. you if you bet Green Bay, you're taking points. If you bet Chicago, you're giving up four points. Correct. So at the end of the game, you take whatever the score is. Let's say it's Green Bay 28 and Chicago 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if Green Bay won the game, they were getting four points, so it would actually be winning the bet by eight points, which doesn't really matter. But let's say, let's say it was the other way, and Chicago was 28 and Green Bay was 24. Well, if it was a four-point favorite, the bet would be a push and they would refund your money. All right, so. Now, but if you got a better number, if you got three and a half at South Point, mm -hmm. you would win. That's why. Getting the best number is very important for a sports better. Okay, so some of them there there is a half half a point difference here. So if mm -hmm. if you wanted to bet uh, on Green Bay, you'd probably want to go to one of the places where they're going to give you four points rather than three and a half. Uh, well, yes, or, yes, yes, yes. If you're going to bet the dog, yes. Okay. Now, so if you bet uh, the under over, well, let's let's say you want to bet Green Bay at Caesars, and uh, uh, so you're getting four points. So if you put up $100, you bet $100, how much will you win? If you only put up $100, you win $91 and change. So this is, goes into how you would make a bet. And it, it's important to understand this because especially on a busy day, you know, you have the uh, ticket writers who do everything on a computer now. You know, they used to write them by hand. That's what they call writers. But if it's a busy day, what you need to do, let's say you want, you're at Caesars and you want to bet Chicago minus four. You would go up to the window and you would give them the game number. I want game. I want the Chicago Bears game number 452 minus four to win hundred dollars, or for 110, because it's going to cost you 110 to win 100. Now I see this mistake all the time. People go up. I want Green Bay for 100. Well, the clerk, if he's not busy, he's going to say, Do you want to win 100? It'll be 110. Or do you want to bet 100? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to you're not going to get the full 100 back because you're laying the juice. So a hundred dollars at a minus one ten is going to pay about ninety one dollars in change if you win. So when you go to if you want to bet to win a hundred dollars, just say that. Say I want Green Bay, you know the game number Green Bay minus four to win a hundred dollars, and say that'll be one hundred ten dollars. You give it to them, they give you a ticket. Don't lose the ticket. 
because that's your receipt. And then mm -hmm. uh, if you win it, you bring the ticket back and they would give you $210 back. Your $110 plus your $100 profit. All right. And in that same game, if you wanted to bet over, mm -hmm. you would go, and now how would, you, how would you say that one? Because you have a game number, 451, 452? Right. And the totals are generally the over is the uh, top number, the odd number. So if you walked up, you could say, I want game 452 over. They wouldn't know what you're saying. But I usually say 451 over 46 to win $100 or whatever it is you want to bet. Okay. Uh. It's simple <laughs> when you get the hang of it. But on a really busy day, if you just come up to a, a ticket writer, now if it's, if it's the you know big NFL game, they're going to probably know what the game rotation is because that's how they punch it in a computer. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a... a college basketball day with 100 games and you say I want more head state minus four they're gonna say give me a game number yeah you know if they're not busy and they're nice they'll look it up for you but for the most part they're gonna say what's a game number which you should be prepared with so, so probably if you're a novice sports better the most important thing would be to to, to learn uh, how, how to make this bet when you go up one yes. of the basics and most most physical sports books will have they call them betting sheets where they'll list the lines and they'll list all the teams and the game numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you walk into a book, the first thing you should do is go find the betting sheet for the sport you're interested in. If it's NFL, find the NFL sheet. They'll have the morning line and everything listed. Now the lines won't be accurate, maybe, because they might have moved, mm -hmm. but it will give you the, the teams, the game number, and you know what time it is, and then you, you walk up to the I want you know game number, blah, blah, blah. You have it right at your fingertips instead of Because I've done that, try to find them on the board when there's 100 games up there, it's almost mm -hmm. impossible. So mm -hmm. that's a better way to be prepared. Okay, so, so again, uh, so that was at Caesars, but if you went to, say, Coasts, so all the uh, Coast casinos, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, Gold Coast. Uh, yeah, Coast, there's a lot of Coast. Coast. Yeah. Uh, Yes, <laughs> Orleans. I mean, or there's millions. Orleans. Yeah, right. And then, and then stations would be like uh, Sunset Station, Palace Station. Yeah, Palms now, which has a sports right. book, and, and yes. Green Valley Ranch. All, all the station props. Mm -hmm. So again, no matter which one you're walking into, it's going to have the same line. Most likely, if they're if they're all in Las Vegas, yes. Okay. All right. So in our NFL example, we did under over, and we did the points. Yes taking or, or giving the points. Now, we didn't have any money lines. So what we have here now, this, and, and I should say, these lines were taken from, there, there's a website, Las Vegas Advisor. Uh, we're in their offices today here in, in Las Vegas, uh, Huntington Press, and you put out these lines? Uh, there is a service, and I think I need to get into explaining where this service came from. Because prior to like 1993, there was no, nobody knew what the other book's lines were. Mm -hmm. So it was a good time for, for betters for the most part because you could find books with far different lines from each other. And in 1992 or 93, a service came out called the Don Best Sports Service. And what they do is they put out a grid like this with all the lines on as many casinos and you can adjust which casinos you want or whatever. And when the lines move, it'll light up on the screen. So it was great for sports books because they knew what the lines were out there and they and they also knew when it was getting hit with a big play because the turn all thing mm -hmm. will turn black you'll see every sports book move mm -hmm. so they know that's a big play and it made it easier also for betters because you have a place to look for discrepancies you know uh, one way that you can beat it is like trying to follow these major moves by big betters mm -hmm. so when you see that screen light up and it, it goes from three and a half to four everywhere well, if you can find a sports book that's still three and a half, you're getting a great bet because you're getting the number that the original originator, we call them the originator, who's the handicapper, who's, if you're going to move the screen like that, you're a winner. Mm. And there's a group of people, and there always have been, who try to find out what the biggest bettors, the sharpest bettors are betting and follow their plays. They're called followers. And it's a big part of what people who aren't expert handicappers do to try to beat sports or some books will be slow to move their lines on other things, so they'll call them stale lines. And if they're lazy and they don't do it, you can go in and get a better number than there are in other books. So that's w one strategy that people use to try to beat them. All right. now, now we're going to talk later about uh, how, how, how you can be a long-term winner mm -hmm. at sports betting. But as you say, it's complicated. <laughs> so now, now let's get to our, our Major League Baseball. And this one, we have some examples of uh, money line, it's called, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so the first one here, this is from uh, Wednesday, June 5th. 
Um, the 3.40 p.m. game, then you have the game number, the, the, the bottom, Philadelphia at San Diego. San Diego's the home team. So the opening line is 112, minus 112, slash minus 108, which means? Correct. Which means if you wanted to bet the favorite, which is Philadelphia, because the, they're across from the, the team that is the favorite. It's just like, you know, with the point spreads. So whichever, whichever team is the uh, money line is across from is the favorite team. So in this case, Philly is minus 112. Mm -hmm. San Diego is minus 108. So if you went in and you wanted to bet if the opening line was still there, if you wanted to bet on Philly, you'd put up 112 to win 100. If you wanted to bet on San Diego, you'd put up 108 to win 100. That's, that's the juice instead of it being even money on both sides. Okay, and then the eight? The eight is the total. Total, like just like in football games, it's a total run scored in the game. All right, so that's the same as under over. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we go over to Caesars, and it's uh, so their line was uh, minus 116 and plus 106. Yes, so what that's telling you is from the opener where it was 112, it's 116 now, it's 120 at William Hill. That means that they have moved the line towards Philly. It's, it, it costs you more to bet on Philly now than it did when it opened. All right, and below it has eight and a half, well, um, and then zero minus one twenty. Yes, eight and a half over. So uh, what they're saying is, and sometimes instead of moving the number, they will move the money line, even though it's a total or or a point spread. So in this case, if you wanted to bet, see, it opened at eight and it was getting bet over. They were moving the number to a higher number. So now, if you want to bet Caesars, you would bet over eight and a half. You would lay one twenty to win a hundred. If you want an under, you would bet 100 to win 100. So the over is favored. Okay, so now if someone wants to go and they want to make a bet now, now w on the team, it has J. Arietta and C. Quantrill. Those are the pitchers? Those are the pitchers. And when you bet baseball, there's different ways you can bet them. They're called listed pitchers. That means those two, if you, if you specify on listed pitchers, that means those two pitchers have to start. Mm -hmm. If they don't, you have no bet. If you say, I want an action, it means you have a bet no matter who pitches. But what will happen is if, let's say, Arietta doesn't pitch, that would change the line because the pitcher is the most important factor mm -hmm. in a baseball game. So they may change that line if he's out and all of a sudden San Diego's a favorite. Well, if you had bet action, they're, gonna, they're not going to give you the line you originally bet it at. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you the, basically the standard line that's out there. They're going to change your bet. So what you really want to do if you bet baseball is specify on listed pitchers, and then you'll know what you're getting. Oh, sorry. Now, now one thing I, I guess I should ask. So, so you, and we never, we didn't discuss this, but the line you bet it at stays the same. It's not like paramutual betting no, no, no. where you, you can bet a horse is two to one, then it goes down to, you know, uh, e even money. You're going to get paid even, even money. Yes. So, so in, in sports betting, what you bet it at is is your that's what you have definition for winning. Yeah, or losing. so if you bet it and you bet minus one sixteen, you bet one hundred sixty to win sixteen to win one hundred at Caesars, and the game went up to like minus one thirty five, right. you would you're still only laying one sixteen, which is good, but it goes both ways. All right. Uh, one more thing about the totals: if either one of these pitchers doesn't start, mm -hmm. the totals no action and they'll refund your money. Okay, so now what, I guess one last question. So if someone wanted to make one of these bets uh, and they went to the window, do they have to say, I want, uh, well, game number be 951, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Do you have to say you want action or yes. pitcher? Yes, yes, in baseball you do. Okay. So, so you, you would say, I want, I want you know, uh, the game number 951, uh, Philadelphia, 116 to win 100, and I want listed pitchers. Sometimes they'll ask you, sometimes they won't. But... Yeah. You should specify you want listed pitchers. If you don't say, you would get action as opposed to listed pitchers? They will usually, I think they would give you action, or give you listed pitchers most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, one way to tell is, look, you know, you should always, if you always, if you make a bet on a sports book across the counter and you get a ticket, check your ticket. Make sure it's what you want, because they make mistakes. Um, so sure. if you walk away and, you know, you look after the game and you thought you had Philly and, and you had the other side and you, mm -hmm. you have to say, hey, I meant to bet that, they're going to say, sorry. Check your tickets before you walk away. Uh, one other thing about tickets. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing now to, if you get a betting ticket, to take a picture of it and keep it on your phone. Uh, for one reason, you might lose it. 
Uh, for another reason, these tickets are sometimes printed on thermal paper, which will tend to uh, fade. Fade, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And if it's not readable, then you have a problem. So take a picture on your phone, and if you lose a ticket, or if it should fade out to where, you know, some people wash them, they leave them in their pants or whatever, they forget to have them, take a picture of the ticket, and if you lose it, go to the sports book counter, tell them what happened, show them the picture, and they will do a report, and you won't get paid right there. They'll make sure that nobody else has come to cash that ticket. But once it's expired, which can be from 30 to 180 days, then you will get paid. They will pay it for you. All right, that's a great idea. I like that. Yes, yeah, taking pictures is an important thing. All right, so the numbers that we were talking about today for Major League Baseball and uh, NFL, these lines, uh, can you explain where they came from? Yes. If you remember, I talked about the Don Best screen, which is basically what these are derivatives of. Mm -hmm. So this is a screen that you can access for free through LVA Sports, Las Vegas Advisor Sports, LVA Sports. And if you, once you go to that site, click on Current Lines, you'll see this grid. You can, uh, you can adjust it to whatever you want. You can have first half lines, second half lines, and half, second half of a game. You got all the different sports. It's very similar to the Don Best screen, but this one's free. The difference being from the expensive Don Best screen is that is up to the second line moves. These are delayed. So if you're a sports better that needs to know exactly when lines are moving, you need to pay the money. But most people that we're talking to won't. Okay. So this is a great I way to get an idea of what the lines are, where they've moved, what the differences are. And it does it for a bunch of different sports. I find it very useful at half times because you can see what the half time lines are. And uh, it's just a great tool to use. Now, now we had spoken uh, so far about money line and the spread and, and points. But there's other kind of bets you can make. So, so one of them is props, proposition bets. Can you explain what uh, those are? Yes, proposition bets are derivative bets during a game where you can bet on specific players, specific things to happen, you know, how many field goals will be in a game, uh, all kinds of different things. It's only limited by the imagination of the sports book. And most of them are similar to money lines. There will be, there will be a, a, you know, a spread on the money line. So let's say you want, uh, okay, we have, Right now, th this was an actual example that I picked up today in the casino for Game Six of the NBA. Game Six of the NBA. So you have uh, Pascal Siakam from Toronto. His point total is 17 and a half. You can bet it over or under, and you can either lay 110 on either side. Mm -hmm. So that is known as a prop. There's a lot of different props. You know, three-point field ga goals made by S Stephen Curry over five. That is 110 on each side. So these all are 110. Now there's a very good chance that you picked up this sheet when you go in the book, but these lines have moved. Mm -hmm. So they can't keep reprinting sheets, so they're gonna tell you at the counter, you're gonna go up and say, I want Siakam over 17 and a half, you know, 110 to 100, and they're gonna say, sorry, that line's 120 now. So right, you have uh, to now, I, I'm sorry, I, I assume that those boards that they have up in, up in the, uh, up all around the sports books, those will have the changing odds? They will there? have the changing odds, but they're hard okay. to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, on a busy day, the boards are big and there's all kinds of numbers. All right, but you could also ask the guy when you go up to You can the, ask him, the clerk. and if you think it's the same. But yeah, it's best to, if you can find it on a board, you can see what the money line is, and then you mm -hmm. can be prepared when you go up there. So it would be the same thing. Bet, I want bet 50-61 over 17 and a half to win 100. Okay. Now, he, here's another one, future bets. Because now my son, when we came to Las Vegas all the time, he was always bet uh, $20 on the Dolphins to win the Super Bowl. Yes. And, uh, and it was a terrible bet. But if you were a diehard Dolphin fan, that was what you had to do. Yes. So maybe you can explain what those future bets are. Yeah, future bets, I mean, again, there's a lot of different forms of them, but essentially you're betting is something to happen in the future. So self-explanatory, but, you know, it can be for, you know, like a tennis tournament, it can be for a golf tournament, or it can be a season-long thing, who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's going to win their division, blah, blah, blah. So when you they're a big winner for casinos for a couple of reasons number one they get to hold your money for the whole season mm -hmm. which is a big thing and you have to let them hold your money for another thing they don't let you bet both sides of it in other words most of them don't they're starting to now but but the money lines are such a spread that it's not worth doing but they can say well I, i'm going to give you five to one on the dolphins to win the super bowl they're not going to say well you can lay seven to one that they won't win you only get one side of a bet so that mm -hmm. gives them license to take a big chunk of vigorous out of it so if the correct line is 20 to 1 and they're giving you 5 to 1, obviously you're making a bad bet. Mm -hmm. However, futures can be fun. 
you know, for twenty dollars you get to sweat the whole season of games. And if it gets, you know, close to it, like like in the the uh, hockey game, St. Louis Blues, they were two hundred fifty to one before the season started. Wow. There was one guy who had four hundred dollars on him. He won a hundred thousand. Wow. So they're fun for people. And sometimes they come in, but if you're trying to make very few pro betters bet futures unless they find a line that's way out of way out of whack and offers mm -hmm. value. Well, I remember my son had had fun and he'd get excited when they were, they they looked like they were gonna have some have a good season, mm -hmm. but then they always went straight down the tubes. Yeah, I know. But you get But he did he, he had, had fun. a lot it's of entertainment fun. for yeah, twenty for 20 bucks. You know? Another thing that's that's popular before a season start is the number of wins that team will have during a season. So let's say Miami is seven wins. Mm -hmm. And it'll it'll have a you know, a money line on it the same way. And you can bet how many games they'll win that season. If it lands on seven, you push. If it's under you lose, if it's over you win, if you bet them over, and you get a season full of fun doing that. Yeah, so it's it's you get a lot of value for your money. So it's you get a lot of entertainment for your money. Yeah, a lot of entertainment. Maybe yeah, maybe not. Value, value is a different value. You're, you're, value is a right. different term. Okay, let me, let me explain that quickly. Okay, what 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 winning sports bettors are looking for is value, which means that when you make your bet, you have an expectation, a positive expectation. So you can search through. Uh, there's so many different sports bets out there, but if you have a sharp eye and you're looking for them. You can find value in lines on all kinds of things. So that's what professionals do. And maybe, you know, everything's cool and the lines are square and, you know, there's nothing to bet. And then an injury will pop up. Or a trade will come. And, you know, a team, will, will, a team will, will acquire a really good player, like Toronto did this year or, or Philadelphia did. And a lot of the sports books are slow to move their future bets. Like when Philadelphia picked up uh, Jimmy Butler this year, that was a big addition to them. So a lot of the sports books, the sharp books, went right down from seven to one to three to one to win the East. Well, I found a book that still had seven to one. That offers value mm -hmm. because I'm getting more than what the actual, you know, mathematical expectation is. So, yes, exp uh, value is is a very important term to all betters. You want to find value if you want to try to win in sports betting. Okay, now uh, that's one other thing I want to ask you when, when we're done with these, these these bets here. How do you win? All right, so, so let's just do one last one here, and uh, we do an analysis in the book each year of the of, uh, the casino advantage on the various games. And sports book uh, uh, sports betting is is relatively low, mm -hmm. except there's one part of sports betting that's relatively high, actually very high, and that's parlay cards. So perhaps you can explain what parlay cards are and, and why they would probably be a bad bet if you want to bet on sports. Okay, uh, parlays are are making one bet that has multiple parts to it and you need to win all those parts to win. So if it's a two-team parlay and you got the Giants minus six and over 38 and you say I want to parlay the Giants to the over for however much money and if they win, let's say you bet $50, they used to pay you 13. Okay, now the real odds would be 15 so that's that's their big built-in. And if you, it's called parlays at the, off the board, you walk up to the counter, they will give you the parlay on whatever number is currently on the board. Parlay cards are printed earlier in the week, and they don't keep reprinting them. So a lot of times the lines move, the same line that was originally will be on the parlay card. So really sharp bettors will go around and look at parlay cards and find lines that are off. Let, let's say quarterback got hurt for Green Bay, mm -hmm. and instead of being minus two, now they're plus three. But, well, okay, you get plus three on the other side, and the quarterback's not in there, and you're getting a great bet. Parlay cards are on the outs because the sportsbook managers know that they're getting beat by sharp players who are doing these things. So a lot of places have eliminated them and now they call them parlay sheets and you walk up and you get the price that's on the board at the time. Which is a really bad bet because parlay cards pay less than a parlay off the board. That's one of the things they do. So instead of getting 13 to 5, you might get 12 to 5. Or on a, you know, a four-teamer, instead of getting 12 to 1, you might get 10 to 1. So they take their, their edge there, but they found with the really sharp guys that they still can't beat them. So I talked to a sportsbook manager the other day, and he said, I figured they have about two years and they're, they're going to be finished. Hmm. Some of the new books aren't even offering them. Now, now it's interesting because when, when we would do the stats each year, every year it was pretty much it was like 17% uh, house edge yeah. on parlay cards. But when I, when I think, of not being a sports better, when I think of parlay cards, I think back when you had to pick like uh, five teams. You could you pick three teams or four teams or five teams or six teams. Mm -hmm. and, and the odds, if, you, if it's 50-50, uh, you know, they gave you very bad odds. Yes, for, they, they pay you quite that. a bit less than you should. And that, that's why they hold so much, it's called the casino mm -hmm. hold. Because 
the average Joe loves parlay cards because mm -hmm. they're easy. You pick right. them up, you pick your teams, you, you get bang for your buck. It's easier than going to the counter and saying, I want a 14 parlay with these four teams or whatever. You know, so parlay cards are very popular among people that just want a chance to win a lot for betting a little. Mm -hmm. And they don't really care about the lines because they're not sophisticated. And that's why parlay cards win so much. All right, but it, house. It's, it's interesting that they, you threw that in. So you, sharp bettors would actually make, could actually make money on, on yes. parlay cards. Yes. Okay, I was not aware of that. Yes. All right, very interesting. So, so speaking of winning, okay, so now we're coming to the important part. Now, now we, we've, we've spoken about how a sports book makes its money and the different bets you can make, and hopefully people understand now how to go to, the, uh, to their favorite sports book and read the lines up there or on mm -hmm. the sheets and, and go up and make their bets. But now, can, ha, how does someone make money? And uh, if you, if you want to make money as a, as a playing blackjack and tell people, well, you got to learn to count cards. So it can be done. Now I do know that there are people who are professional uh, sports bettors that can make a living at it. But so for the average guy, do you have? To, well, I guess number one, what does it take to be able to make money consistently uh, as as a sports book better? And, and and number two, uh, if if someone doesn't have the skills, wh what can they do to possibly increase their skills or that? Uh, to, to be better at their sportsbook betting. Okay, 